What is up guys? Today we are back with another video and we're going to be discussing every class that I took in my second semester at Georgia Tech. Now if you've been following the channel for a while, you probably remember that a few weeks ago I came out with a similar video where I talked about all the classes I took in my first semester at Georgia Tech. If you haven't already watched that video, I'll link it down below, but I decided I'd make a little bit of a series out of these types of videos and I'd break down every single semester of my time at Georgia Tech. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kyle and I'm an incoming senior at Georgia Tech studying computer science and these videos are hopefully a chance for you to understand what sorts of classes you might take at Georgia Tech, especially if you're a computer science major. And with that, I won't waste any more time. Let's get started by talking about my very first class of my second semester, which is CS 1331. All right, first up, CS 1331, also known as Introduction to Object-Oriented Programming. This was a three credit class and I had it on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Like I mentioned in the previous video, I'm pretty sure most of you guys are curious about grades and GPAs at Georgia Tech, so no worries because I have them right here. All right, so for the semester that I took this class, the average GPA was a 3.32, which is pretty good, and 48.1% of students got an A, 27.5% of students got a B, 10.4% of students got a C, and 6.8% of students withdrew from the class. Like I mentioned before, this class is called the Introduction to Object-Oriented Programming, but it would also be appropriate to say that this is your introduction to Java. That being said, there is no expectation that you have any knowledge of Java or object-oriented programming before you start the class. I definitely think this was a super useful class because object-oriented programming is something that every programmer should learn pretty early on in their careers, but the one thing I didn't really like about this class is that they were very particular about you knowing very minute details about Java's syntax. Now, I know the professor who taught this class back when I took it has since left Georgia Tech, but either way, I would definitely recommend practicing writing code by hand because that was one of the most important things that you needed to be able to do for tests. I would definitely recommend this class to any non-CS majors who are maybe interested in learning some of the fundamentals of programming and object-oriented programming, which is super important. As you guys may remember, I had my very first internship after my freshman year, and I'd only taken this class in CS1301, which proves that they were super useful and able to do the job. Next up is Math 1554. This is also known as Linear Algebra. I had this class on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. It was a four credit class, and it was one of those classes that has recitations on Mondays and Wednesdays, and required lectures on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Before I read off the GPA and the grade distribution for this class, I'm gonna lead off by saying that this is definitely one of the harder classes that I have taken at Georgia Tech. That being said, the average GPA was a 2.69, which isn't great. In terms of the actual grade distribution, 33.3% of students got an A, 29.5% of students got a B, 13.3% of students got a C, and 2.9% of students withdrew from the class. So, like I mentioned earlier in this section, this is known as linear algebra. Depending on your major, you might only have to take introduction to linear algebra, which is 1553. In my experience, and it would seem a lot of other people's experience, this was a very challenging class. And I'm just gonna chalk that up to the fact that I had never taken any sort of linear algebra course before I took that class. Now, it didn't help that his tests were notoriously difficult, just to give you an example, and this is something that he told us ahead of time, so it's not like it was a big secret or anything, but we would have these true-false questions that you would only get half the points if you got it right. The other half of the points came from you having the correct justification. So for example, if I got every single true-false correct on that test, but I messed up on all the justifications, I would only get 50% of those points, even though I had the correct answer for all of them. And the final exam for that course is also known for being very challenging. Now, it's just speculation, but I have heard people say that they think the average on those finals is generally in the 40s or the 50s, and I can honestly say that that was one of the hardest finals that I've ever taken at Georgia Tech. Of course, this is just my experience with one professor during one semester. I have some friends who took it with another professor and had a completely different experience, but this is just my word of warning that this class should probably not be taken lightly. Next up is CS2050, also known as Intro to Discrete Mathematics. Now this was a three credit course and I had it on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. It also had a recitation on Wednesday evenings that I'm pretty sure was considered optional, but I would definitely recommend that you go to these. In terms of the grade distribution, the average GPA that semester was a 3.15, with 39.8% of students earning an A, 30.3% of students earning a B, 19.0% of students earning a C, and 8.1% of students withdrawing from the class. If you hadn't already guessed from the title of the course, this is really more of a math class than a CS class, and I can honestly say that we did zero programming during this course, despite it being labeled as a computer science course. Even though this isn't a typical computer science class, I definitely think it was still useful. You'll learn about some different algorithms, proofs, and different ways of thinking about problems that I honestly think are really useful to developers. Some people think that this class is irrelevant for CS majors and don't think they need to pay that much attention, Personally, I would completely disagree, and honestly, I can say that I have looked at these notes a number of times over the past two years. 
Next up is one of my all-time favorite college classes, and if you've watched my other videos, you've probably heard me rave about this before, and it's English 1102 with Dr. Sturm. For those of you who don't know, every single English class at Georgia Tech has a different topic that it's focused on. In this case, mine was poetry, painting, film, and music for New York City from the 1960s till present day. This was a three credit class that I had on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and that semester the GPA was actually a really healthy 3.72. 80% of students got an A, which is really high, 15% of students got a B, 3.3% of students got a C, and no one withdrew from the class. Every single English class at Georgia Tech is based around something called woven, which stands for written, oral, visual, electronic, and nonverbal forms of communication. There were a lot of different group projects in this class, and I wasn't overly interested in the material before I got started with it, but honestly, our instructor and his ability to deliver that information and his insights was really what made this class so great. So to anyone who's trying to get into English 1101 or English 1102, if you have the ability, try to take it with Dr. Sturm because honestly, his class was amazing. The fifth and final class that I took in my second semester at Georgia Tech was French 1002, also known as Elementary French 2. This was a three credit class and I had it on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Once again, this was another class that had a pretty high average GPA. It was a 3.74 for that semester. 69.8% of students got an A, 24.5% of students got a B, there were no C's, and 1.9% of students withdrew from the class. This is the successor to, unsurprisingly, French 1001, which I took during my first semester at Georgia Tech. Something that's important to note is that to get credit for these courses, you have to take both of them. So if I had just taken French 1001 and then an introduction to Spanish class, I wouldn't have met my language requirement. I would have to take French 1001 and French 1002 for two different Spanish classes to meet those requirements. If you'd taken French 1001 before this and you remembered most of the stuff you'd learned, you'd be perfectly fine hopping into this class, but if you're someone who knew some French from high school and you tried to get out of French 1001, be ready to jump right in and skip over a lot of introductory stuff in this class. Alright guys, that just about wraps up this video. I know it was pretty quick, so if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. If you enjoyed it, as always, hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. And consider subscribing if you're new here for videos every single week. That's it. Thanks for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.